Minecraft Legacy Edition is arguably one of the best versions of Minecraft, but not just because it was a remake of the game, but because it brought us players together as a community, even in the darkest of times. And now that it's been 4 years since Legacy's discontinuation, we're going to be looking at 100 facts and glitches about this Minecraft version. Now keep in mind that there's 7 versions of Legacy Edition, and all 7 are basically the same with some exceptions. For example, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch editions were discontinued during their 1.12 phase, and the PS4 edition got discontinued in 1.14, while every other version of the game got discontinued on 1.13. That being the Wii U, PlayStation Vita, PS3, and Xbox 360. And since this is going to be a pretty long video, if you want to, you can turn on your console of choice to try some of these glitches out for yourself. And if anything else otherwise, you may enjoy this video. And before you start, I've split this video into chapters, so if you did miss a glitch, you can go back to it with ease. This one is unfortunately not a glitch, but rather, it's about the zombie horse. You see, while in Java Edition these things can be written, in Bedrock and in Legacy Edition, they're basically useless. But unfortunately, the uselessness also happens to tools with hay bales. Because no matter what tools we use, it will not break faster. Putting lava in a cauldron and sanding it, it will make it so you take less damage than you usually would while trying to actually swim in lava. With the following message, you've been burnt to death. Hitting villagers while iron golems are around won't make them mad at you. However, this only works on PS4. And just how like you can MLG with the water bucket, you can also MLG if you put water in a cauldron. Though it's very hard, you can get it from time to time again. Now here's a cool one. On the latest editions of every single Legacy Console Edition, now you can stand on top of Cactus without ever having to worry. If you've ever had trouble finding treasure in Legacy Edition, well here's how. First, it is recommended that you go to the bottom left side of the X. Afterwards, you can count your 16s and make sure everything is right. But here's a better way to make sure you're in the right position. First, ensure that you're touching the X on the bottom left corner, just like this. And the next thing we're going to look at is your coordinates. From there, you may pull out a calculator of your choice and divide your coordinates by 16. And if both numbers you see are whole numbers, then you're good to go. However, if it's not exactly a whole number and it's instead a decimal, you might need to move around and try again. And after all that, the one thing you have to do now is move up 7 spaces and move 8 spaces to the right. And from there, you've basically found the treasure chest, but it only works on 1.13 upwards. Have you ever wanted to get X-Ray in Legacy Edition without actually cheating? Well, if you're tunneling, all you need to do is place a water bucket here and swim up. And as the world illuminates, you can see that the stronghold is actually just right there, which also means it's easy to find the portal room, but once again only works on 1.13 upwards. Throwing an ender pearl and pausing the game and doing the same thing after one second will make it so that way you throw ender pearls insanely fast. And for why this even happens in the first place, well let's just say the game is able to pause, but the cooldowns aren't really to do the same. If you've ever wondered how to get the water block and flood your nether, well here's how. First, dig one block down and place your water in it, then following that, place the leaf inside. Along with that, you must break the block, scroll to the next available space in your hotbar, and pick block all at the same time. And for me, pick block is down on the d-pad. And now that you obtained your water block, you can now flood your nether. In Legacy Edition, you can only make 20 falling blocks happen all at once, which is to be assumed to keep Legacy Edition at a stable frame rate, but this doesn't apply to dragon eggs. As you may know, most of the soundtrack produced in Legacy Edition is mostly by C418. However, something as much as specific as Legacy Edition, it will play an extended version of Cat.
This extra bit onwards is known as DOG and isn't on Java or Bedrock Edition. And as some of you may know, you can never craft enchanted golden apples after 1.9. However, on Legacy Edition, you can still craft them. Crafted with one apple and eight golden blocks, you can make the enchanted golden apple and you can still craft it today. Have you ever wondered how deep does the void go? And I know most of you people think it's gonna go on forever. However, turning yourself invisible will make you invincible to void damage. But that's only the start, because if you fall 900,000 blocks in the void, you will hit the limit there. However, to even get down there in the first place takes hours. So please take my word and don't become a psycho. When attempting to dry a sponge, you would usually put it into a furnace to make it faster. However, because of this, you can't put it in the smoker or the blast furnace. There is actually a way to duplicate diamonds quickly in Minecraft Legacy Edition. But first of all, make sure that your diamond block isn't in your hotbar, and then pick block and scroll to the next slot in your hotbar at the same time. And finally but not least, open up the 2x2 crafting grid by pressing square, and then you can uncraft those diamond blocks into diamonds. You may then repeat the process over and over again. But be warned, as if you go to the crafting table and do the same thing, you'll actually get rid of your duplicated items. No matter if you press the build button on it, or press the same button you would usually use to open up your crafting menu. You can actually eat while sprinting in Legacy Edition. And to start things off, you have to be able to sprint anyways. And from there, press your sprint button of choice, the circle button, and the eating button all at the same time. And if done correctly, the food of your choice will go down and back up, signifying that you used the item. If you've ever wanted to see what's on top of the nether, all you need is a perfect spot and a boat, and then if you get in and hop out, you'll be placed on top of the nether roof. By placing many TNT minecarts down and blowing it up at the same time, the ender dragon will indeed disappear. The catch? Well, if you get blown up to the height limit, the ender dragon will indeed get blown up there too, but you will not see the boss health bar. You've reached a very long fact, which means that I'll be giving a quick summary and then I'll be talking about the topic in full detail. And if you wish to proceed to the others, you can always go to the chapter section of this video. Knockback in Legacy Edition is just like Java's 1.9 knockback. And to start off, one regular hit gets a creeper two blocks away from you. But while sprinting and hitting the creeper, it does five. But by manipulating the PvP system by hitting the creeper while jumping and hitting it again while falling, you can make it do more knockback. However, this will only apply to items with the knockback enchantment. Speaking of items with the knockback enchantment, hitting a creeper with the knockback enchantment without sprinting gets him close enough to 8 blocks of distance away from you. But of course with sprinting that changes to 10.5. And of course by manipulating this type of PvP with the knockback without sprinting, it can go to 14 blocks. While with sprinting and doing all that makes it go to 17. Applying all that and a slow falling potion can make a mob go 22 and a half blocks away from you. And doing the same thing but with a chicken makes it so it will go 24 and a half blocks away from you. And finally, by a freak accident, with all that applied, if you manage to hit the creeper three times, you can make it go 29 and a half blocks away from you. And if you could somehow do it with the chicken, that would be the most amount of knockback you can ever do in Minecraft Legacy Console Edition. You know how sometimes you attempt to uncrouch and you fall off your bridge? Well, I have an explanation for that. Because as you can see, when placing the next block, you can see the character slightly jitter as if he's falling. In Legacy Edition, if you break a dead bush, it'll always give you one stick. If you're able to glitch your horse out while riding it, all you have to do is keep pressing the jump button and releasing it once it's time. This will make it so the horse will always stay in the air. You can actually push a mob away at great distance as long as you keep saving the game while you're inside the mob. It's recommended to do it more than twice, otherwise it won't go away at all. And as you may know, naming a mob Dinnerbone flips it upside down, however this does not apply to players. 
When hitting the west and north border of the game, it will make you so it looks like you're standing still, while hitting the south and east borders will not have that effect. Did you know that you can actually use different texture packs without even paying for them? Well that's because you're given a notice that this is a trial version, and in order to save, you must buy the entire pack. But it's worth it just to amuse a different texture pack in Legacy Edition. The grass block for decoration can be placed on the ground, but it acts slightly different than any other block in the game. Look at the flower. If I try to place it again once it's already been placed, it won't let me place it again. But with the tall grass selected, it will try as hard as possible, but it knows it can't do it, but it will still try to use it anyways. If you fly really fast, you can see that the leaves load slower than the actual world. In creative mode only, you can get any enchantment on any item. If you fly into water with an elytra, you'll stand up as if it's normal. However, by entering the glide minigame and doing this, it will make it so it's slightly different. You won't stand up at all. By placing a sticky piston down and using a lever, you can flip back and forth to duplicate the loot that's inside. This includes all the things that are on the screen right now. But it only works on 1.13 and upwards, and if you check the chest, the glitch won't work. If you press the crouch button on your controller, your character will do this animation where he's pumping his fist out. This is used in 4J style promotional material like Glide minigames. And here's a more visible version. In Legacy Edition, the death message from a falling anvil is slightly different. Forest Plays YT was squashed by a falling anvil is actually different because there's two spaces instead of one. This is actually what it's supposed to look like right here. Normally, when you have 300 bars left, you can't sprint, but when you have can fly on, you can sprint. And for the explanation as to why, well, you would need to fly fast anyways, so they just force enabled sprint. At the Ender Dragon boss fight in the end, if you break all the bedrock blocks at 0, zero and place water above it, the Ender Dragon will perch wherever it feels like. If you have the disable exhaustion toggle on, you may notice that you aren't healing as fast. Another thing you'll notice is that you won't take damage once you run out of hunger. And now's the time for another duplication glitch. If you have 18 diamonds, face a crafting table like this, fill up your inventory with blocks that can't interfere with the crafting, and finally, head to the decorations tab and hold X. In a result of doing this, your items will duplicate real fast. And it's only after 30 seconds that you'll be able to build a diamond house. But don't do the glitch facing down to the face of the crafting table, as it will interfere with how the glitch works. Another interesting thing is that if you die by sweet berries, it won't actually say you die by sweet berries as the message for such a thing hasn't been implemented. There is a custom skin animation check, which depending on whether it's on or not, will make your character look slightly different. Minecarts in Legacy Edition fall very fast for some reason, hitting the ground faster than a player can usually fall. This means it's almost impossible to even survive in a minecart in survival mode. But land it perfectly and you can do the minecart MLG. By placing the water bucket on the ground, you can swim through and you are now able to walk through one block gaps. By hitting the pause button at the right time, you can fall without taking any damage. This can also be achieved by saving multiple times. In the UI interface, if you uncheck animated character, your paper doll, as Bedrock calls it, won't be there when you sprint or fly. You can use any throwable or ranged item differently in Legacy Edition, but by placing a bow there and pick blocking it, scrolling right at the same time to duplicate the item, you'll get a ghosted bow. And if you put your throwable at choice on the ghosted item, then it'll disappear and it'll have the effect of the bow when you try to use the snowball. You could even switch them around and you'd still be fine. This works with crossbows, tridents, ender pearls, and even the fishing rod. If you've ever wanted to tread with a villager pretty fast, all you have to do is break its job and place it back down. However, this only works on PS4. If you attempt to set your spawn on a newly placed bed, it will not actually save your spawn and it will instead take you back to your other spawn location or to the default world spawn. 
Switching from one item to the other takes about a third of a second, while with the shield on, it takes about an eighth of a second. Reasons unknown, but if we look at the footage again, you can see that the pickaxe is immediately switched to instead of the item going down and going back up fully. In Legacy Edition, there's a spawn cap which if you spawn too many mobs, it will not allow you to spawn anymore. If you die in the night and your spawn is outside of loaded chunks, then once you spawn back in, you'll be greeted with a lot of mobs. If you place down the mob head while pick blocking and scrolling right, you'll get another mob head, but with this one, once you put it on your head, your head disappears! Yet there is still a very small fact about this mob head. When placed in the shade, it specifically lights up that area and that area only. If you scroll through the splash screen text, you'll find this splash screen text. This text is hard to read if you play the game at the default resolution, but at 1080p, it's fine. You can't find this anywhere else but Legacy Edition. This is what it looks like to control another player's ability to play the game at all costs. And it all happens by unchecking trusted players. Making an entire flat world of TNT and attempting to blow it up won't crash the game. Because very few can go at one time. This can be seen when we run through a bunch of pressure plates activating the TNT and over half of them are gone. Minecarts in Legacy Edition go twice the speed than Bedrock in Java Edition, as seen here. When you spawn into the tutorial world on the PS4 edition of the game, these villagers will not be updated to the 1.14 villagers that they are today. When you cure a zombie villager prior to having it infected while had a job, it'll not only just not change the price, but it'll change the job entirely. The minecart with the furnace is the most curious yet useless item in the game. However, its use is tied to a theory that I think people will agree with me on. Back in the day when regular minecarts couldn't even go up a single slope, yes this is actually what it looked like, you would essentially need that to push you upwards, but here's the thing, you could just use powered rails, so yeah exactly, what's the point? For reasons unknown, the only thing you would hear in the credit sequence is what you would usually hear in the end. My only guess to this is that the music was never in the game, hence the reason why the developers didn't make code for this. This glitch can only be done in very early versions of Minecraft Legacy Console Edition. This glitch where you can block your sword and hit it at the same time can cause chickens to die instantly. In battle minigames, there's a Curse of Binding 2 book that you can't even achieve in normal gameplay. That a can fly toggle mode in survival mode is definitely different than creative mode flying. Take a look. To put into more simpler words, creative mode more focuses on the building technique, while survival mode more focuses on the survival technique. Or I guess you could just say creative mode is basically WASD. When you first spawn into your new world, you're usually slower than you are when fully rendered in. This can be seen when you first jump 5 times compared to when you're completely loaded in. Let's play an activity. I filled 9 boxes with 1 XP bottle. How many boxes did I pick the XP up from? Well, if you said 9, you're correct. Now let's throw 4 into all 9 boxes. Let's see how many now. Well, it's not 9, unfortunately. If you try to mine while jumping, it'll affect your mining speed, but in Legacy Edition, that just doesn't happen. In the first copy of the PS3 Edition, Ender Portals can be glitched, and this even applies to mobs on a door. In old versions of the game, the way the game autosaves is that it pauses the game frequently while it tries to save. And fishing rods were pretty bugged back then. Oh hey, is this fact number 69? You've reached another very long fact. Every mob in Legacy Edition can be rendered from different distances. So without further ado, let's get into this. The creeper can be rendered from 61 blocks away. The skeleton can be rendered from 68 blocks away. The Wither Skeleton can be rendered from 79 blocks away. The Shred can be rendered from 68 blocks away. The Spider can be rendered from 79 blocks away. The Cave Spider can only be rendered from 40 blocks away. A little side note I want to add is that the mobs won't disappear immediately after I go beyond the number. A Zombie can be rendered from 66 blocks away, while its Baby Variant only renders from 33 blocks away. The zombie villager can render up to 67 blocks away, while its baby variant goes up to 33. The husk can be rendered up to 67 blocks, while its baby variant also goes to 33. 
You can see a pattern right now. Every single baby variant of the mob is only rendered at half the distance of the mob itself. So I will not be showing the baby variants anymore. And if there is a baby version of the mob, just pretend that that number is halved. The drown will load in at 67 blocks away. The witch also loads from 67 blocks away. However, a silverfish will only render up to 23 blocks away. A gas will load in from 80 blocks away or 5 full chunks. The zombie pigman can be loaded in from 67 blocks away. The blaze can be loaded in from 64 blocks away. The Enderman can only be loaded from 80 blocks away. The Endermite, once more, can only be loaded in from 23 blocks away. The Shulker Mob can only be rendered from 64 blocks away. The Phantom can be loaded in from 49 blocks away. The Elder Guardian can be rendered up to 80 blocks away. Regular Guardians can be rendered up to 55 blocks away. Evokers can be rendered up to 67 blocks away. This even applies to Vindicators and Pillagers. Ravagers can be rendered up to 80 blocks away. A villager will load up to 64 blocks away, as well with the one wearing trader. Bats can render from 40 blocks away. Pigs can load up to 57 blocks away. A sheep is rendered at 66 blocks away. A cow is rendered in from 68 blocks away. The chicken is rendered from 32 blocks away. The rabbit's rendered from 27 away. The squid can go up to 51 blocks away. The cod could go to 30 blocks away, and also applies with the salmon. Purple fish can go up to 51 blocks away. The tropical fish can only be rendered from 25 blocks away, while the parrot can be rendered from 41 blocks away. The wolf also renders from 41 blocks away. The ocelot renders from 42 blocks away. The cat loads in from 33 blocks away. However, the polar bear renders from 80 blocks away. The panda will also load in from 80 blocks away with the horse being at 79 blocks away. This also applies to the donkey, the mule, just about, the zombie horse, the skeleton horse, and llamas. The sea turtle renders at 59 blocks away, the dolphin renders at 51 blocks away, the iron golem renders from 79 blocks away, the snow golem will render in from 69 blocks away. The wither will render from 80 blocks away. However, it is unknown how far the ender dragon can load in from. But it's definitely more than the length times width of the island. On the PS3 version of the game, the maximum render distance is 10 chunks. However, on PS4, while harder to see because of the fog, the maximum render distance is 17 chunks. There is a better way to x-ray, however, it's not as efficient and it doesn't work all the time. And all you have to do is swim your character to a wall and have your character almost flat enough. But it only works at a 1.13 and upwards. Only sometimes where you can see world glitch up when you put the world size to classic. This is one way to break bedrock. If you try to make a snowman while bedrock is interfering, then if you place it at the right spot, then that bedrock will disappear. As you can see, all the spots I'm showing right now are the spots you can do right now. And plus, if you make 16 snow golems, then you can actually obtain the bedrock as well. You might be confused why I'm showing this, but the FOV in Minecraft Legacy Edition is actually 64. As you can see, I built a specialized setup for this specific task. Now let's compare from the other FOVs and pay attention to the planks. This is 30, this is 40, this is 50, this is 60, this is 70, this is 80, this is 90, this is 100, and this is 110. And now, if you count on 22 planks in Legacy Edition, you would know why I put it at 64. In the description of the Minecraft Battle Map Pack 1, it says it is not compatible for Minecraft 2019, referring to Bedrock Edition. If you're in a block, you'll stop taking drowning damage if you continue to survive. You can see this because the bubbles that would usually be there underwater are still here now. This is how different blocks sound when you run on them, so listen closely. My guess previously is that it was a falling block, but actually it might have just been a whole block, but everything else wasn't covered in. 
On January 1st of any year, the splash screen text will always say Happy New Year. And this is what the leaderboards looked like if they weren't on speedrun.com. You could change filter from your friends to overall, and you could change the mode. For this one, I was about to say that Book and Quill would crash the game, but actually, it doesn't crash the game. And on the contrary, oh, oh, this game is still updating, it turns out that my stupid joke that I've been making for the past year now actually came true. Xbox One Edition received an update. But before you go check, it doesn't upgrade to 1.13 nor 14. All it does is remove a button from one menu. And now we we'll move on to minigames. In the tumble map itself, you can find a little mining area, but right by it are two chests that don't convert to double. When a person is close to winning, they'll have a little glow effect on them, as you can see with the green particles. Along with that, when in the minigame lobby, you're actually still in survival mode, but you can't take any damage, so when you attempt to take damage, they'll just be bubble particles. If you go down to the bottom of the lobby map and walk through this one block gap, you're able to make it through, and eventually you are going to get your dragon egg. However, you cannot get out unless you play another round of minigames. Speaking of such, the minigame lobby does have a slight chance of glitching out, that being pressure plates becoming water blocks and doors becoming stone blocks. Even if you are able to play minigames, it is kind of laggy, and you're only lucky if you survive due to lag. For some reason on PS4, if you activate the pressure plates that make the entire trampoline go upwards, those pressure plates will disappear. And if you activate both at the same time, at least one of them will stay up for good. If you're able to do this setup on the minigame lobby, you can fling yourself up high where you're not meant to see anything else. And trust me when I say there is a lot to explore. And hell, if you find the right place, you could find a redstone. And eventually, if you decide to fall off, you'll be greeted with what is basically a flat world. For once, I'm doing two at once, so you're welcome. So first off, you can access part of the flatland that will never really render, and it's pretty trippy in my opinion. What's even better, arguably, is that the snowballs will overlap the void, and will eventually respawn from their original throwing location. And finally, for minigames, I'll talk about the music. This track... was composed by C418. The music he created for battle mode is battle mode 1 through 4, and I just played battle mode 2. In battle minigames, you can hide in pretty illegal spots that can actually get you stuck if you're not careful. This bug, where if you use a bow and switch to a looting 3 sword to get more loot, still exists in Legacy Edition today. If you so happen to die by the wither and attempt to pick up your stuff, your stuff will just disappear. Unfortunately, I have no more glitches for you. However, I can tell you four more facts about Legacy Edition. First and foremost, the reason why Legacy Edition was discontinued. At the time when it was discontinued, the game was still supporting 12-year-old hardware. And worse, only 5% kept playing that version until then. And to the 5% that kept playing Legacy Edition, you are all legends. Another fact for Legacy Edition is that the Xbox 360 Edition, obviously, was worked on first, and it was in development since 2011. The third fact is that Minecraft was actually going to be a PlayStation launch title when the PS4 was released, but it was put back respectively in 2014. And the final one, talking about PS4 again, the reason why it lasted so much longer than every other port was because of legal reasons reasons. My best guess to further prove this statement is that on the PlayStation version, they're called tokens, while on literally every other version, they're called mine coins. And with that being said, that is a hundred facts and glitches for Minecraft Legacy Console Edition. And if you have enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, but don't make that your first priority. And I'll see you in the comment section. Goodbye. Wait, why is comment? How did you know that I turned down my phone volume? Well, good news, the slime 3495. I'll answer that for you. So explosions are pretty loud and annoying. Along with this annoying sound, like what the f Okay, now that people turn down their phone's volume, I can explain more secrets about Minecraft Legacy Console Edition. Well buddy, your statement's eight months off, I already did it.